And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In just one minute, Sleep is for Children, by Ralph Bell and Eugene Francis. Hello, I'm Burgess Meredith. Did you know there are over three million persons in America who are hard of hearing and not doing anything about it? Maybe you or some member of your family is hard of hearing. Well, fortunately, I've never had this problem. Some of my friends and family have. Now, a few years ago, your excuse might have been that you didn't want to wear a bulky hearing aid. But today, it's a different story. I've just seen the new Super 60 hearing glasses developed by Mako Electronics. If I hadn't known they were hearing glasses, I would have guessed them to be regular eyeglasses. It's a wonderful way for any hard-of-hearing person to conceal a hearing loss. There are styles for both men and women. For an interesting free booklet on hearing glasses for yourself or a friend, stop in at Mako or write to Hearing Glasses, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Don't wait until your hearing gets worse. It may be too late. Send for your booklet today. Write CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Who's there? Is somebody there? Who is it? It's me. Whoever it is, you better get out. I'm going to call the police. Put the phone back, please. <gasps> Do as I say. Mr. Bepler, what are you doing here this time of night? Well, I'm not here to deliver your egg. Get out of here. Get out of my house this instant or I'm going to call the police. <laughs> I'm afraid you won't get the chance. What are you going to do? What I did to the others. Others? You killed them. That's right. But why? Why me? Because you're all alone tonight, like they were. No, you don't. No! Please don't! Please! And for the fourth time last night, the suburban town of Woodlake was the scene of a brutal and meaningless murder. The latest victim was Mrs. Leland Worth, 34 years old, who was found strangled in her living room by police late last night. All four victims have been homeowners in some of Woodlake's recently completed housing developments. Local authorities admitted today that they were still in the dark as oh, to the identity of the vicious off, marauder. You, However, the search is... Con Local authorities still in the dark. It's just terrible. Why are the police going to do something? Well, they only got eight men on the force. Woodlake ain't like the big city. I'm beginning to wish we were back in the big city. At least I felt safe in my apartment at night. Oh, now, city's no place to bring up a little girl like you or Stephanie. Mr. Gordon working late again tonight? Yes, it's income tax time. Busiest part of the year for an auditor. Well, sooner or later they're going to catch up with whoever's doing these killings, and then everybody can relax. Oh, uh, should I fix Stephanie some breakfast? You better let me see if I can coax her into opening the bathroom door first. Oh, that's a real cute trick. Locking herself in the bathroom every time she gets mad at you. Shoot. Stephanie? You hear me up there? Well, what that child needs is to get her bottom blistered a few times. She'd stop her foolish... Stephanie! Unlock that door and come down this minute. Do you hear me? All right, young lady, I'm calling your father. Hello? It's me, Walter. How do you feel? Exhausted, honey. I couldn't get back to sleep after those police sirens woke me last night. Then the bump on my head kept throbbing. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I bawled Stephanie out about leaving her roller skates in the hall like that. So you can just guess where she is now. Uh-huh. Yeah. The bathroom. Yeah. I guess I'll have to take the lock off the door. Any news about the murder? No. Walter, I'm frightened about staying here alone tonight. Look, Alan, there's nothing to worry about. I phoned the Woodlake police, and the chief promised to have a special man patrol the entire project all night. <laughs> anyway, why don't you ask Rosa to stay over? Or at least until I get home. Can I speak to oh, Daddy? Well, at last. Walter, your daughter's finally come out. 
She wants to speak to you. <laughs> okay, put her on. Here, Stephanie, now don't talk too long. Daddy's awfully busy. And be sure to put the phone back when you're finished. I'll be in the kitchen. Hello, Daddy. Hello, sweetie. How's my love? Oh, fine, Daddy. Well, that's good. Stephanie, take it easy on your mother. Locking yourself in the bathroom is not a nice thing to do. She yelled at me this morning. Well, you deserved it, honey. Daddy nearly broke his neck last night stepping on your roller skate. You bent the skate? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but... Oh, Daddy, somebody's at the door. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Stephanie. Stephanie, hang up the phone, darling. Stephanie. Stephanie. I'll open it, Mommy. Oh, hello, Mr. Bepler. Uh, your mama home? Uh-huh. Well, tell her I've brought her eggs. Mommy, the egg man's here. Oh, good morning, Mr. Beppler. Sorry I'm late, Miss Gordon, but I've been working with the police all morning on that uh, Worth murder. Well, I didn't know you run the police force. Well, I ain't really. Some of us old residents have been deputized temporarily since these things started around here. Do you have time for a cup of coffee? Well, <laughs> never say no to coffee, Miss Gordon. <laughs> Pour a cup of coffee for Mr. Beppler, Rosa. Sure. Have any idea who did it? Well, not yet. Uh, they're looking for a fella I told them about. Uh, I've seen him hanging around these parts. Well, probably some delinquent from one of these new families. It could be, Rosa. Well, could you, be. you know, you was born on that chicken farm of yours, Abel. You, you ever remember having trouble like this before all this here building started and those city folks moved out here? Can't remember nothing more violent than a man beating his wife. Or vice versa. Oh, I tell you, some of these new people, mighty peculiar. Now, Rosa, that, that ain't true of everybody. You couldn't ask for anybody nicer than Miss Gordon here. Well, thank you, Mr. Beppler. I just hope you catch that man soon before I'm a nervous wreck. Oh, he ain't likely to try to break in where there's men folks around. Them last three houses, the women were all alone. Well, that's just it. My husband's working late these nights. He hardly ever gets home till after midnight. I see. Well, uh, how about Rosa here keeping you company? Well, as a matter of fact, Rosa, Mr. Gordon just suggested the same thing. Oh, now, I'm sorry, Miss Gordon. I already promised Miss McCloskey across the road to stay with her. Her husband's out of town. Dear. Well, there's no need to fret, Miss Gordon. The chief just assigned me to patrol this area tonight. I'll be handy should you need me. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos, corn chips. It's not polite to smack your lips, but you can't help it with Fritos, corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos, corn chips. Whenever you have a party or friends drop in, serve a bowl of crisp Fritos corn chips and watch your guests dig in. They're golden chips of corn just made to munch. Serve them plain or with your favorite dip. There's a special Fritos in a king-size style that's just right for dips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. You'll find Fritos corn chips taste just right whenever the occasion calls for good munching. They have such good crisp flavor, such good for you nourishment. There's contentment in every munch. Get Fritos today. F R I T O S. Fritos corn chips. Munch, 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 Fritos corn chips. Hello, Stephanie, Ellen, somebody come to the phone. Phone still tied up, Walter? Yeah, yeah doggone it. Wait, I hear some voices. They must be no phone. dollar thirty, sixty-five cents this week. Hello? Yeah, thank you, Miss Gordon. Uh, and don't worry about tonight. I'll be keeping an eye on Hello, hello. Somebody come to the phone. Yeah, goodbye. Thanks for the coffee. Oh, hello. child. Stephanie, you did it again. You left the phone off the hook. Hello, Ellen, hello. Hello, uh, Walter, is that you? What are you doing? What am I doing? Trying to get my phone untied. Stephanie didn't hang up. Well, why didn't you hang up? I did five minutes ago, but that doesn't disconnect us. It doesn't. I don't see why not. It's very simple, honey. The person who makes the call has to hang up. Otherwise, the phones remain connected. 
I can even hear you talking to someone. Oh, that was Mr. Beckler who delivers the eggs. He was telling me about the murder. Mrs. Worth was all alone in the house. All the people who've been killed were alone. I wish you'd come home early tonight, Walter. Rosa can't stay with me. Ellen, I promise you, I'll rush. I'll get there as soon as I can. Will you keep in touch with me? Sure, honey. I'll phone every hour, okay? All right, dear. Bye. <laughs> Hello? Hello, darling. Everything all right? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Aren't you sure? Well, I keep hearing strange noises outside, but I guess that's just my imagination. I'll be glad when this night's over. Stephanie asleep? Not quite. She's given me quite a day. I'm exhausted. Will you be much longer? Oh, just a couple of hours. Well, call me again then, will you, dear? Sure, honey. Meanwhile, why don't you go to bed, get some rest? All right, I'll try. I'll lie down with Stephanie. Maybe she'll go to sleep faster that way. Mommy, you asleep? Mm -hmm. Mommy! What? I hear noises. What noises? I heard glass breaking. Oh, go to sleep, darling, please. I heard somebody walking outside. Oh, right. Now, Daddy will be home soon. See? Oh, who can that be? Yes, I'm coming. Who is it? It's me, Miss Gordon Rosa. Oh. Rosa. Come in. What are you doing here? Well, Miss McCloskey's husband come home, so I thought I'd come over to see if you still want me to stay with you. Oh, yes. I'd appreciate it very much. I uh, found Stephanie's skates out on the porch. I figured I'd better bring them in before Mr. Gordon <laughs> falls over them again. Thank you. Honestly, when will she ever learn? Mm, kids are all the same, I guess. I I'll put them someplace out of the way. Oh, you mind if I fix some coffee? No, no. Go right ahead. <clears throat> By the way, Rosie, you didn't see anybody near the house. No. Why? Well, Stephanie thought she heard something outside. Oh, and... might have been me coming up the driveway. Yeah. She's still awake? I've never seen anyone resist sleep, so <laughs> I'd better go up to her. Well, now, just you relax. I'm here, so there's nothing to worry about. Ah, thank you, Rose. Mommy! Stephanie, I want you to get back into your bed this instant. Was that Rosa? Yes. Now, come on. Climb in. <laughs> Cover up. You talk me. All right. There. Now, good night. Good night. Mommy. What? I'm hungry. Well, that's just too bad. Oh, could I just have a glass of milk and a cookie? No, it's too late. But I'm hungry. You won't starve. Now go to sleep. Oh. Rosa, you all right? Oh. Mommy. Hush. Rosa. Is anything wrong? Stephanie, you stay here. I'll be right back. In a moment, we will return for the third act of... Suspense. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute, rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch. 
Dandruff Remover Shampoo. What are the skates doing on the floor again? Rosie in the kitchen? Rosa! Rosa, what happened? Don't stay here. He's in the house. I'll get help, Rosa. Mommy! Mommy, where are you? Stephanie, don't come in here. Ah! Stephanie! What happened? Uh, uh, the roller skate. I came down after you and I tripped on the roller oh, hush skate. Now, hush now, hush, hush, hush. Come on, come on, get up. Oh, but it hurts. Please, Stephanie, stand up. We've got to get out of here. No. As I say. No, no. You must go on it. Be quiet. Ow. You hit me. Well, I'm sorry. Where are you going? Come back here. I'm going to lock myself in the bathroom and I'm never coming out. Stephanie, come back. Don't go after him, Miss Gordon. Mr. Beppler. Oh, Mr. Beppler, thank goodness. How did you get in here? Through the window. Oh. It's you. You. No sense trying to run, Miss Gordon. I'll just have to take it out on your little girl. Oh, you wouldn't. Don't answer it. Keep away from that phone. Probably my husband, Mr. Pepley. You better let me answer it. Well, all right. All right, you talk to him. But just remember, you let on anything's wrong, and your little girl pays for it. Hello? Hello, dear. Just calling again, as I promised. Everything all right? Yes, Walter. Good. I'm almost through here. I I... can't find that voucher, Walter. Well, is it in the file? No, sir. Uh, honey, hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Hang up. But he, he... Hang up. He didn't finish talking. He'll only call back. Yeah? Well, I'll just take the phone off the hook, and then he'll get nothing but a busy signal. Why, Mr. Pepler? Why are you doing this? What harm have I done you? Harm? You're crowding me, all of you newcomers. Hedging me in, bulldozing the trees down, spoiling the land with your fancy new cigar box houses, bankrupting us all with your taxes for schools and roads and such. My taxes have gone up double since you city people started flooding in here. That's the kind of harm you done me. Joe, finish that. We'll call tonight. Hello, Alan. I'm sorry. Well, hello. Maybe when people like you find it ain't safe here, hello. you'll go back where you came from. Ellen. That's why I killed Mrs. Worth and the others. And I'll keep on killing till you're all gone. Good Lord. Ellen. Hello. Hello, operator. For heaven's sake, operator. Hello. In just a moment. We will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics, so serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I... Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink like refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and get an air, be sociable, have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. Rosa, Mr. Bepler. She was born here in Woodlake, like yourself. Why kill her? I didn't expect to find her here. She saw me and she'd have told. Now, there's no use you're backing away. Where are you going to run? Please, Mr. Bepler. Uh, uh, see, you nearly tripped over that stage. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it out on the porch where it belongs. Sure, and start hollering for help. Come here. Let go. Let go. Oh. Oh. Mr. Bepler. Mm. Stephanie? Stephanie, where are you? Answer me, where are you? 
Stephanie come out of the bathroom quickly. Stephanie, unlock the door. Hurry. No. Please. You trapped me. Stephanie, there is no time to explain. Now open the door before it's too late. No, I'm going to stay in here all night. Please, Stephanie, please. I didn't do anything. You hit me. Stephanie, I am sorry, and I'll never punish you again, darling. Just unlock the door. You promise? Yes, I promise. Now, hurry, we've got to get away from here. You ain't going nowhere. Stephanie, don't turn the lock. Don't come out. Stay in there. It won't do her no good. I... I... Who the devil? Martin, police. Police! I'm getting out of here. Hey, there it goes. Through that window. Stop where you are. Hold! <laughs> Mrs. Gordon? Mrs. Gordon? I'm up here. Are you... You all right, Mrs. Gordon? Yes, yes, officer. Your husband called us, and we got here as soon as we could. He heard you and Bepler over the phone. But he took the phone off so there'd be a busy signal. Uh, that's where Bepler made a mistake. The connection isn't broken until the calling party hangs up. Mommy! Mommy! Oh, your little girl all right? Yes, officer. Mommy! It's all right, dear. You can come out now. I can't. I can't. I can't turn the lock. It's stuck. I'm locked in. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Suspense. You've been listening to Sleep is for Children, a story written for suspense by Ralph Bell and Eugene Francis. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Are you all out of tune because you're irregular? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. You'll feel right on pitch when Kellogg's All Brand goes gently to work, relieves constipation due to lack of bulk, by supplying your system with bulk-forming whole bran. Yes, a daily bowl full of Kellogg's All Bran with Milk helps put you right back in tune. The natural way. The good-tasting way, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So remember, if constipation's a problem... Gentle it away, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Bran. The good food way to keep regular as clockwork. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Bran. At your grocers. tonight's story were Elspeth Eric as Ellen Gordon, Ralph Bell as Walter Gordon, Bill Adams as Mr. Bepler, and Betty Gard as Rosa. Others in our cast were Ruth Tobin and Sarah Fussell. again next week when we return with The Revolution by Peter Fernandez. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Be sure to tune in next week and every week to Suspense on CBS Radio.